Morning. Welcome to Friday's program. Thanks for Tim for looking after things the last couple of days whilst I've been away. Now, this past week, we found out what ministers here in Jersey want in a public inquiry. They want to establish a inquiry into historic abuse in the care system and what it wants to actually consider what its terms of reference are, for want of a better phrase. This is exactly what the investigation will actually have to look at. Now, these terms of reference have been set, but they have yet to be agreed by the state so that they could be amended and altered. But basically, the state wants to find out how the island's care system failed children and what can be learnt from past mistakes. The ministers want the committee to look at the post-war care system right, right the way through to the current day. It includes reviewing the political oversight of children's homes and how child care practices have changed in the intervening period. The inquiry will hear evidence for abuse victims and from care home staff alike. And it will also look at how Jersey's authorities, all its authorities, dealt with these abuse concerns. It all comes at a time when some people are voicing deep distrust about Jersey's government and the way that politics is reported in the media. This morning, I'm asking you, do you share those concerns? Has Jersey got a culture of secrecy and cover-up, and if so, why? Give us a ring on 720255. You can email us at radiojersey at bbc.co.uk, or you can join the debate on Facebook and Twitter. Later on in the programme, I'll be joined by the Minister for Home Affairs and also the Managing Editor of the BBC here in Jersey. But first, two commentators who challenge what they call the so-called establishment. Their blogger, Rico Sorda, and the former Senator and Health Minister, Stuart Sivir who is a critic of the island's authorities, claiming a widespread culture of concealment. Mr Sivray, this culture of concealment is nothing new, is it? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, and indeed, you could go back centuries. I mean, Jersey's essentially been run by a, a, a feudal oligarchy since uh, its quasi-independence about 800 years ago. And in truth, nothing has really changed. I mean, we have the surface trappings of a modern functioning democracy with a legislature, a judiciary, and things of that nature. But if you scratch below the surface, it essentially operates on a very few feudal power basis um, with the entrenched feudal establishment. You are either one of them or you're one of their vassals or you are an enemy of them, an enemy of the state. And that, that's how it functions. And when you're trying to uh, combat any kind of power in Jersey, when you go up against any entrenched interest, be it in public administration or any other field, um, there is no check and balance that you can turn to to defend you. We don't have an independent judiciary. There isn't um, a, a lawful, proper prosecution function in Jersey. It's deeply politicized and conflicted. Um, the police force uh, only investigate crimes that the establishment want them to investigate. So ordinary people, especially if they're challenged the system are uh, powerless, worse than powerless in fact. The rest of the system unites to oppress them. Do you consider yourself to be an enemy of the state? Uh, not at all. I consider myself to be an enemy of Jersey's um, de facto mafia uh, and I'm on the side of ordinary powerless people, which is why of course all these uh, various oppressions get visited upon me. I mean the, the fact is the... Well you I, break the law and you get sent to prison. Well I mean uh, in a normal jurisdiction for example if you're prosecuted for an offence you have an independent judiciary. Uh, you don't have a judge who's personally directly conflicted in the matters you were trying to expose and you don't have a judge who's actually friends with um, suspected criminals. If you but it's inevitable in a small well, society that people are going to know other people and let's, let's put that to one side because we've rehearsed that argument a number of times before. Let's talk about this idea, this culture of concealment and the idea that we are not a fit jurisdiction to investigate ourselves. Well, this is a fascinating example you see you about the, the whole nature of um, the media in Jersey. You've tried to quickly skip away from that point. We have not in fact rehearse that issue. There has been no discussion whatsoever in any of Jersey's mainstream media about the fact that it's simply against the law. It's against English law, it's against Jersey law, it's against the ECHR. What is against the law? To have judges who are directly conflicted. Courts and judicial processes are supposed to be completely objective. But, but that's the process unarguable. has gone through in those circumstances and they were deemed not to be conflicted, weren't they? Um, they deemed themselves not to be conflicted. The system deemed itself to be con not to be conflicted. Let's not go into semantics. Let's talk about the situation we have at the moment. This is not semantics. This is a straightforward statement of fact. A lawful judicial process must have a non-conflicted judge. And that, they are, that, they, but they went through the, the system, didn't they? I mean, I'm not here to stand up for the, the judiciary in any shape, size or form. What I'm saying is, the reportment of fact is such, they went through the process and they were deemed not to be conflicted. You then have they, to challenge that. They deemed themselves not to be conflicted. The system deemed it, yeah, all right. They deemed themselves not to be conflicted, which is not a lawful process. And anyway, the, 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 the fundamental point is that 
Jersey's judicial systems and its prosecution functions are not compliant with the established frameworks of administrative law. Mm -hmm. And these matters will be challenged ultimately in London because London is ultimately responsible Indeed. for, for these But issues. I suppose it begs the question, can our committee of inquiry that's going to be established ever be independent if you argue that there are so many conflicts of interest? Well, it, of course it can't be independent. And if one looks at the actual terms of reference that have been proposed by the uh, Jersey cabinet, uh, they're, they're hopelessly defective. Um, there are many key issues in those terms of reference that are simply not not uh, addressing the actual important issues. And for example, when you're looking at the uh, potential risks to vulnerable children within the system of public administration, there, there are certain public authorities ultimately who are responsible for the proper protection and oversight of those children. There are, there are certain champions, as it were, in the system that vulnerable children should be able to look to for proper protection. And ultimately, in respect of the public authorities, those are the police chief and of the social services minister. And those are the two champions, ultimately, that vulnerable children have in the system. But in Jersey, we have a situation whereby all of the rest of the polity, the entire realm of public administration, has united to unlawfully oppress and obstruct those two public authorities. In your belief. We're going to bring in three people from outside the UK to actually chair this committee. Does that not give you that set of independence? Could I just finish what I was saying? No, I'm asking you to move on and to talk about the issue that we're addressing here this morning, which is this idea of whether or not this committee of inquiry can be independent. And uh, that's what I was doing, and this is why we're, why we're here. We're talking about how the, the media in Jersey will not discuss the real issues. Now, the real issues are that if um, the rest of the polity can unite to unlawfully oppress the police chief and the social services minister, then vulnerable children in the system don't have a chance at all. Now, the terms of the Committee of Inquiry that have been proposed simply don't address those two issues. Now, any kind of public inquiry into how all of Jersey's public apparatus failed, which it clearly did, all of Jersey's public administration more than broke down in terms of failing to protect vulnerable children. It actually went far to the opposite extreme, that united to actually oppress vulnerable children. What could you as Minister have done to change that? Now, any, any uh, meaningful public inquiry has to look at the key failings of the system, which were the unlawful oppression of the minister and the unlawful obstruction yeah. of the police. But you were the minister. What could you have done differently? What you needed to do as a minister, what any person needs to be able to do as a minister, is to rely upon the honest, full and frank and professional advice of the senior civil servants. And so no you blame your civil servants? No, minister. Uh, indeed, uh, that's precisely the evidenced fact. And if you want me to come in and speak for an hour or something and give you the evidence, indeed, in fact, in the course of 2007, I provided a great deal of evidence to the BBC in Jersey, not one word of which you wish to report. But if you want uh, to have a long well, the editor program, of the BBC will join us after 8 o'clock. If to you want to have a long, a long program to go through the evidence, I'm delighted um, to do that. But I mean, take for example just one example of the published evidence. Um, Graham Power, the senior civil servants made an attempt to co-opt Graham Power into their unlawful conspiracy to engineer... Graham my, Power was the chief of police at yes, the time. Um, to engineer the dismissal and the obstruction of the Health and Social Services Minister in 2007 because he, me, at that time, was trying to uncover and was succeeding in uncovering a lot of child protection failings which these civil servants were covering up. Do you feel then that you were, in, you were inadequately protected by the people around you, by your fellow states members, by your colleagues? Oh, it was worse than being inadequately protected. They joined in with the proactive oppression and obstruction of me, which was actually unlawful because the terms of the Minister's responsibilities and powers are defined quite clearly in the Children Jersey Law 2002 and all other public authorities are obliged by law to support and assist the Minister in respect to any investigations. Bring in Rico Solder here. The complete opposite. Let me bring in Rico because he is here also this morning as a, a co-blogger if you like, somebody who wants to uh, establish a, an alternative narrative to all of this. Listening to what the former Senator had to say, do you share his concerns? Yeah, um, I do and um, obviously uh, it's very hard to debate it in this sort of situation. I mean, the issues are so um, vast and, uh, you know, you ne really need to spend, you know, maybe a week, you know, with a series of programs looking at this in depth. And um, it's just interesting that um, Mr. Sivredo was talking about Graham Power because obviously a lot of my work has been spent on looking at the uh, illegal suspension of Graham Power and the uh, actions of the Home Affairs Minister later who's coming in. And um, during my investigation, um, one of my major concerns was Graham Powers judicial review when he went to um, yeah, he, he took it to judicial, judicial review and the actual conflict of interest with the jurats it's just because it's funny listening out to you but the um, what was going in, on in um, Graham's uh, judicial review and the conflicts with the jurats it was it was just 
It was too close. When you say conflicts, is it because they knew other people in they an actually, island of 100,000 well, people? Well, the, the, um, the, uh, court, uh, the commissioner was uh, Julian Clyde Smith, who had worked at Ogier's. Tim Lecoq was the Solicitor General who had worked at Ogier's at the same time. One of the Jurat's husband worked at, Jur uh, at Ogier's. And, is that uh, not inevitable in a small it's not internal... Good enough. It may not be good enough, but is it not inevitable? I, it's, if you walk in, to me, I just think if you walk into a court of law, it's up to the court to give you a fully independent judiciary. In that case, are you arguing that we should have a judiciary that is independent from the island insofar as that actually our judici judiciary should be based in the UK? Yes, I do. Personally, I do. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And uh, th all of these, um, these arguments that come forward to the effect that, oh, well, it's inevitable that people will know each other in a small island, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's all well and good, but the law is the law is the law. And the law says, and this is English law, Jersey law, ECHR law, it's well established, a court of law, a judiciary has to be at law completely independent and if it fails to meet that standard then it's not lawful so we can't make excuses for Jersey uh, to the effect that oh well a small place so we'll just have to ignore the requirements of the law. Of you don't think there are sufficient checks and balances that could be put in well, place uh, to mitigate? On the contrary there absolutely are not. And, but could uh, they be put in place do you think? Um, they can be put in place by having a complete separation of powers in Jersey and indeed then having both the prosecution function and the judiciary in Jersey overseen and run from London. It's and we'll debate we'll that work. later absolutely we'll debate that later with the Home Affairs Minister yeah. who's already saying that he wants a, a quasi-justice minister of some kind yeah. and uh, Rico Sorda is going to stay with us uh, and talk further about that. Finally, um, Mr. Sivray, I mean, there's an interesting story in the, in the Telegraph this morning, which I'm, I'm sure um, m many people will have an opinion on, it, suggesting that Britain's biggest bank, the HSBC, is at the centre of an investigation by Revenue and Customs in the UK, uh, because a whistleblower has provided details of offshore accounts in Jersey. Uh, the bank at the moment hasn't commented on the allegations, but the paper says that it's public record. It can find uh, identification of hundreds of people who are evading tax and whose accounts have not previously been disclosed. I would imagine this is the kind of headline that you would anticipate to be pretty commonplace. It's going to be increasingly common. Um, th th there's no question other than that it was always a case of uh, when, not if, Jersey's offshore finance industry was going to get curtailed, as is the case of offshore finance industries around the world, simply because larger nation states can't afford to carry on allowing this kind of thing to happen. And I was saying this back in 2004, and that we needed a plan B, uh, but uh, 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 as is usual, that nobody in the States was interested. Mr. Sivray, thank you very much. Enrico Sorda, I know you're going to stay with us and we're going to join the debate with the Minister for Home Affairs, Senator Ian Lamarcon. He'll be joining us after half past seven. And I will put the issues uh, that Mr. Sivray raised regarding uh, information that the BBC has or has not had in its possession uh, to the editor of the BBC in Jersey, John Gripton, after eight o'clock this morning. It's 18 minutes past seven o'clock. Now,